Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I will show you how to integrate React and Spring Boot in an application. So we will use React in the front end and Spring Boot in the back end and integrate those two. So let's start. At first, I will create a folder and name the folder Spring React. Then I will open this folder with VS Code. Right click, show more options, open with code. At first, we will create the server. For the server, we will use Spring Boot. And for using Spring Boot, make sure that you have the two extensions. One is Spring Boot Extension Pack and another one is Extension Pack for Java. Uh, you can search here Spring Boot Extension Pack. Okay, this one Spring Boot Extension Pack and another one is uh, Extension Pack for Java to enable uh, Spring Boot applications to run on VS Code. Okay, and if you are using Eclipse, you can also use Eclipse, not, not a big issue. Now I will create a simple Java project. Click on, right click and click on new Java project. Here, search Spring Boot. Click on Spring Boot, then choose Maven, I will choose Maven. Then we have to choose the version. Then I will choose Java as the language. And this is the group ID name. Uh, let it be like this. Then the name of this backend application will be server. Click enter. Click enter and then choose the version of the JDK in your system. In case if you don't know the version of your JDK, then you can go to comment prompt and type Java space dash dash version to know the version and choose that appropriate version. I will choose 22. And then we have to choose a few dependencies. One is Spring Web. This will allow us to build RESTful web applications because here we will use a simple REST API. And then you, you can choose Spring Boot Dev Tools, this one, Spring Boot Dev Tools. Click Enter. And this will be the folder I will choose to create the application. Click on Generate into this folder. And here you can see it's tailing successfully generated and an open button is here. Click on the Open. And a new window will open. As you can see, server folder is generated and inside it we have the pom.xml file. As you can see below that it's activating all the dependencies and all. So we have to wait for some time until it's finished. Now as you can see in the bottom, a tick mark is there. That means all the dependencies are stored correctly. Now I will go inside the SRC folder inside main folder inside java folder as you can see spring boot application starts running from here as you can see at spring boot application annotation is here so it will identify this as the starting point to run the application now i will add another annotation which is at rest controller it's giving me the suggestion to import a library so i will just import that this annotation at rest controller will declare this class as a rest controller making it handle http request and return data directly then inside it we will define a function public string home and i will return a value spring boot now i will add the annotation at get mapping And here I will give the path slash home. What it will do is this will map the slash home URL to the home function method which returns a string as spring boot. So whenever we will hit this endpoint slash home then it will return this particular message spring boot. So we will make only this particular endpoint which we will later access from the front end using fetch method in react now i will run this application by clicking on this play button on the top right it will start running the application from this particular file because this has at spring boot application annotation as you can see it has started running now let's go to port 8080 to see what's it displaying we will go to this particular endpoint localhost 8080 slash home as you can see it's displaying spring boot which we have returned as a string from this function 
So our backend REST API is working fine. Now we will use this endpoint in the front end to fetch the data through React. Now what I will do is I will close this particular folder or particular window of VS code and open the VS code inside the outer folder which contains the server folder and I will create a separate client folder and you can see both of these in this explorer. So I am closing this window. Then in the file explorer, I will go inside that particular folder where I have created the server and I will open this particular folder in VS code. If you are using Eclipse, that's not an issue. You can run your REST APIs on the backend in Eclipse and you can create your React project as, as the front end in VS code. That's also a way. Now, as you can see, server folder is here. Now I will create a React app using Vite. So I will paste this following command, npm create Vite at latest. It's asking for the project name. I will give client as the project name. Then I will choose React as the library. Then I will choose JavaScript as the language. Then it's telling us to run the following commands, cd client, npm install. Now we will run the React app using npm run dev. I will copy this particular URL. I will go to my Chrome, open a new tab and run this particular URL. As you can see, the application is running. Now let's fetch this particular endpoint from the back end and display the value of Spring Boot on the front end. I will open the client folder and I will go inside the src folder. Here inside the app.jsx folder, I will delete everything inside the return. Okay. And here I will simply display an h1 tag containing the word react plus. And after that, I will give the value from the backend. Here, as you can see, a default const count set count use state is there. So instead of this use state, I will use title set title. And the default value I will give as default value. For now, I will place the value of title here beside React Plus. And later I will use the use effect function to replace the value of the title here. Let's save and see what it displays in the output. As you can see, React plus default value. Now I will use the React hook use effect for handling side effects in this functional component. After the use state, I will type use effect and it will automatically be downloaded uh, or imported from React. And let's remove the unnecessary imports. Here I will use the fetch function to fetch the front end URL or the value from that particular endpoint where I have created the REST API. I will just copy this localhost 8080 and I will paste it here. So this line will send a network request to the specified URL HTTP localhost 8080 slash home. Then what we will do is, once the request is complete, we will convert the response to plain text. So response equals to response dot text. After converting the response to plain text, since we have this function set title, which will change the value of this title variable, we will update the value of title. So text equals to set title text. So we are updating the value of this title variable with this particular spring boot string, which is returned from this particular endpoint, which we have created in the backend REST API.
after changing the value of the title if there is any error in case we will catch it here and we will console that error we will give the message error fetching and also print the particular error and after that we will also give an empty dependency array here after we finish uh, typing the use effect function this empty dependency array means this effect will run only once right after the initial render let's see the output as we can see there are some problems let's inspect I'm going to the console as you can see uncaught promise failed to fetch okay so why it failed to fetch let's go to the server to check once okay so we have missed an annotation which is at cross origin as you can see the front end is served from the client folder and the back end is served from the server folder so these are two different uh, regions so in order to allow the cross origin access I have to give at cross origin annotation let's save it now I will restart the Spring Boot application after restarting the Spring Boot application let's see the changes in the output as you can see now the Spring Boot string is retrieved from that particular endpoint to the front end and we can see React plus Spring. Well, we have successfully integrated the React application which is the front end with the Spring Boot application which is the back end. So the integration of Spring and React is successful in our case. So that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching my video. Have a nice day.